In the previous video, we implemented the opening and the closing of the nav menu on mobile. In this video, we are going to implement the opening and closing of the drop down and the opening of the search box on mobile. It doesn't look very good right now, so we are going to improve it in this video. We are going to begin with the opening and closing of the drop down. Now, this is going to involve some animation as you can see on the finished project. Now, the property we are animating here is the height. When you click, the height expands and uh, reduces back down to zero. So if we take a look at the project again, right now, uh, if you ask our question to analyze uh, how we go about the animation, you will see that the initial state is when the height of the drop down is zero and none of the drop down items are showing. And the final state is what we see here, where the items are all revealing. So let us move this back to the initial state and uh, start animating from there. So like I mentioned earlier, the property we are animating is the height or to be more specific, the maximum height. So if we scroll down to the selector for drop down inside the mobile media query, inside the mobile media query we are going to notice that we are assigning it a max width of 200 pixels i will change that to zero so that we can move it to the initial state of the transition of the animation and then i will set overflow to hidden too then now um in order to animate or to open the drop down we are going to use JavaScript to add an event listener on all nav items that have a drop down within them. When a user clicks on that nav item, we are going to add a class called active to that nav item. And then that active class will cause the drop down within the nav item to expand. Then when we remove the active class, again using JavaScript, the uh, drop down is going to collapse. So um, we are going to select a nav item. We will create a selector for a nav item that has a class of active on it. And any nav item that has an active class will pick the drop down for that item and set the max height to, let's say 300 pixels, depending on how long our drop down is. Now we are going to, if we leave it like this, it is going to um, increase the height without any animation or any transition. So we'll need to add the transition property. And what we are going to be animating is the minimum height itself. Sorry, the maximum height. Uh, this is a mistake. What you're animating is the maximum height. So we'll animate the maximum height over a period of 0 0.25 seconds and the timing function is going to be ease in out. Also, when we are collapsing the drop down, we need to make sure it slides back up with the animation effect. So we will also copy this to the normal selector for the drop down. So this is all the CSS work that's going to be involved in opening and closing our drop down. Now, the next thing we will do is using JavaScript to add an event listener to all nav items that have a drop down so that we can alternatively add and remove the toggle class or rather the active class thereby expanding and collapsing our drop down so let's go to our html file we are going to select all drop downs within the nav menu all drop downs belonging to a nav item so down in the navbar responsiveness section here, I'll create another variable. Okay, so we are going to select all drop downs. So take note that this is query selector all and not just query selector because here we are selecting multiple items, multiple drop downs. So any element that has a class of drop down and belongs inside a nav item. 
So we're only selecting drop downs that belong to enough item. Take note that there's a space between the two class names here. Okay, now when we have selected that, we have a list of drop downs on the nav item. We are going to loop through these, uh, this list of drop downs. And for each drop down, we'll select the parent to which it belongs. To select the parent, so we are selecting the parent nav item to which it belongs. So we'll simply add we chain a class called closest to the drop down element and we add nav item uh, the nav item selector so this basically says for this drop down keep climbing up the uh, ancestral path and the nearest nav item you see select that nav item so this will give you the nav item to which the drop down belongs and then now what we need to do is we are going to add an event listener on this nav item we'll listen for the click event and when the user clicks on this nav item we are going to toggle the active class on it okay so i think this is uh, this is really all there is to it if we go back and refresh okay our drop down is hidden when we click it's going to expand and contract uh, just to make sure it works properly with multiple drop downs i'm going to uncomment this locked in users uh, nav item and then we try again and it is also opening correctly so we have successfully implement, implemented the opening and closing of our drop down on mobile so now we are going to proceed to enhance our search input on mobile so when we click on the search icon while we are revealing the search input i want us to hide the logo wrapper and then expand this uh, input element to fill up the entire space that is available so in order to achieve this we are going to bring in the um, the size of the media query to our JavaScript because we'll do this using JavaScript. Now we scroll down to where we have toggle search input here and we'll define a variable called mobile breakpoint and we assign that value as an as a number. We don't need to put the uh, the, the the unit. Okay, so this is the function that toggles the search bar. Um, when we click on the search icon, uh, this function will hide that icon and then reveal the search form. Now we want to also hide the uh, logo whenever we are on mobile. So we are, we are going to provide an if statement here to make sure we are on mobile. And on the window object, we can always access the inner width property to determine the width of the page at that particular point in time. So if that width is less than the mobile breakpoint, then we know we can hide. Oops, we know we can hide. Uh, we know we can hide the search or the logo wrapper as well. Okay, so we are going to add a selector for the logo wrapper so that inside here we can hide it. So the class is uh, logo wrapper. So I'm just going to duplicate one of these selectors and replace the class with logo wrapper and I'll also rename the variable. Now inside here we are going to do a similar thing. We are toggling the hide class. If we go back to our browser, refresh and then we try this out, <coughs> you will see that it is hiding the logo each time the search box is expanded. Now it is hiding, but it is not occupying the entire width. So I'm just going to go to our CSS and fix this. Right now, our search box, remember it is inside this nav element. And uh, we are inside, we are within our media query. So the search bar is inside this nav element. And this nav element doesn't expand completely. And that's why it is not filling up the uh, entire space. 
now in order to make this expand i'm going to first of all select the header for logo wrapper i'll select the uh, logo wrapper and then give it a width of 100 percent and then text align center let's also give it a red border so that we can see okay so it is currently occupying all the space now when we make it disappear and then we give a flex grow of one to our nav element the nav element is going to sweep in and occupy the remaining space so if we do this you see our nav element expanding and occupying all the space now the input itself is not yet expanding to fill up the space because it is inside another element and we need to give that element a width of a hundred so that element i'm talking about is I think this div itself, so let's go to the div. We'll select the nav item within header and give it a width of 100%. And then we'll also make sure that we select the, um, the input elements within that, the input elements within the search item. And give it a width of a hundred percent refresh and uh, now it is working now let me remove all the red borders and our search box is good to go now i know this input is not yet looking as good as what we have on the finished project i'm very much aware of that uh, Remember, we did add some CSS classes to our text input, these classes. So in the future, in the future videos, whenever we are working on designing the input element, we will, divide, will design the CSS for these uh, classes and that will automatically, that will automatically make our inputs to look like what we have on the finished project. So I think I can officially say that this is the end of the design for the navigation bar, both mobile and desktop. Okay, so thank you for sticking with me to the end of this section. I'll, I'll catch you in the next one.